What's up, guys? How y'all doing? I have returned for the 450 recap for the final round of the 2024 Supercross season. It was at Salt Lake City. You've, you may have already seen my recap for the 250 class, so now I'm going to talk about the 450 class. But first of all, guys, before I get to that, just remember, subscribe. I want to keep my monetization status on my main channel. The only way I can do that is with your help. Is if And if you think I'm worth listening to or you just want to see some of my other videos, whether that be my game show runs or my snippets of Hawaii basketball or softball, just hit the subscribe button. Probably only takes you a couple of seconds. So anyway, guys, subscribe. Let's get into this. Putting up my banner here. Jet Lawrence, your champ. Chase Sexton finally wins a dry race. Now, good on Chase Sexton because, really, for Chase to finally win a dry race is something that was so, so overdue. And this goes back to way back in January when I talked about – January or February when I talked about if you make the Triple Crown format regular main event structure. we prob I probably wouldn't even be having this discussion – about why Chase Sexton has only lodged one win this season. And, to, and Saturday night, he made it two wins. Could have been three if the Triple Crown format were counted as regular main events. No overalls, okay? So, that was a good ride by Chase Sexton. And, of course, you also have to consider the fact that uh, Eli Telmack and Ken Roxon were not here. But still... I would not care about that at all. You know why? A win's a win no matter who's out there. And, of course, Cooper Webb soldiering through that thumb injury, and I don't know if anybody else even knew. I know I certainly didn't. I'm pretty sure Cooksey never knew either. But still, Cooper Webb props to him for making it a battle. He even managed to tie Jet Lawrence once, once after uh, – after Jet was going through some uh, uncharacteristic uh, performances, but Jet Lawrence, he's your champion. I don't think I don't think anybody else thought any differently. I know I certainly didn't, despite the fact that twenty point that twenty point margins have been overcome. I talked about that before with Villapoto, David Villaman, and uh, you know other uh, big gaps like. Uh, like what happened, uh, or or some other gap that I didn't talk about. Mike Brown who was leading the 125 motocross series in 05, then suffered some bad performances and eventually lost the points lead and is spawned on the motocross to nations team to Ivan Tedesco. But so, anyway, back to tonight. Chase Sexton finally winning a dry race, like I said, was long overdue. Justin Cooper got the whole shot. And Chase Sexton got around him immediately and checked out. And I'm sure a lot of us are wondering, where was this Chase Sexton earlier in the year? I mean, we saw it earlier. In, I mean, we saw it, flashes of that at least, in the opening half of the season. But as time went on, it seemed like Sexton always found himself on the wrong end of someone else's mistakes. Okay. Like last week at uh, Philly when he crashed in the first turn, and then oh, and then it gone down again. But Chase Sexton finally rid himself of all that trouble, and you got to think that if Chase Sexton was riding like this earlier in the season, Jet Lawrence may very well have not been your 450 Supercross champ. But props to Jet Lawrence; he's going to take a lot more credit to winning this title than Ryan Dungey did in 2010. And you've heard me talk about this before. But when Dungey won the title in 2010, I thought he was a, he got above and beyond spoiled when all the heavy hitters were out. Chase, I mean, James Stewart was out. Chad Reed was out. Andrew Short was out. Josh Grant was out. And eventually, Ryan Villapoto was out after St. Louis. Okay? So, for Chase or I should say Jet Lawrence, to win this title. Jet, Jet, I admit, was my backup pick 
especially after how he looked in the motocross season last year when he sweats all 11 races as a rookie, mind you. <clears throat> this year is his, truly his full 450 season, and he's definitely taken the class by storm. Now, uh, now, obviously, other guys like Telmac, Roxon, and Anderson were all having their troubles. And, of course, Jet took advantage of that. But I think that Jet really came in a 20, 2024 a lot more prepared, especially after how good he looked on the 450 and 2023 motocross. And while Jet still made mistakes, he knew how to uh, – make up for them. And while the other while the other competition made mistakes themselves, they were still out there. Unlike Dungey's title where all the heavy hitters were on the sidelines. And the only guys who really came back from that were Andrew Short and Chad Reed. But when motocross came around, Ryan Dungey at the time still showed that he was the cream of the crop and Chad Reed was still dealing with Epstein Barr. Was or I should say, eventually dealing with Epstein Barr and his performance has really suffered. But you take all those troubles away from Chad Reed, Ryan Dungey would certainly have had his lunch handed to him numerous times by Chad Reed. Of course, we'll never know if he if that would have been the case, but you can't help but feel that that would have been certainly the case if Reed came in a lot more prepared. But for this year. Is Jet Lawrence going to have his lunch handed to him in motocross this year? I don't know. There's a chance he could, especially with Eli Tomac coming back. But, of course, Eli Tomac will have a late start to the season. And, we're court, and of course, we're not expecting Cooper Webb until the back half of the season. Or I should say the tail end of the season. And, of course, Ken Roxon is Supercross only. He's going to be going World Supercross. And, of course, the uh, recent news there, a 10-year deal. But also, but especially with Adam, especially after finding out CEO Adam Bailey resigned. And I don't know any details there. I'm not going to talk about that at all. But still, all I'm going to say about that is that for World Supercross, you get a 10-year deal, good on them. Especially, when a, especially off a series that looked like it was going to be dead soon. But anyway, as far as this race is concerned, Jet Lawrence, I thought, rode pretty conservative, and he came home in seventh. <clears throat> One off of his worst finish, an eighth at St. Louis in the Triple Crown. And I'm glad to see Chase Sexton finally win a dry race, as I talked about earlier. And, of course, congrats also on the careers of Adam Cincerillo and, Ch and Dean Wilson. And I, I didn't even know about Dean Wilson until I watched Cooksey's recap of the 450 class. But another guy that I think really deserves some love, Justin Cooper. You've heard me say it so many times, but that guy reminds me a lot of Jimmy Button when he was in the 250s. And for Justin Cooper to finally come through with, with a second-place ride in the final round of the season, hey, good on him. You know what? And that also kind of reminds me of 1998 when Mikel Pichon on Team Suzuki at the time was looking for a breakout performance. And he was the only guy, or other than Greg Albertine, he was the only guy who had yet to hit a podium. The only guy who did was Larry Ward that season. And Mikel Pichon came through with a second-place finish at the final round in Vegas. And look at what happened to Justin Cooper. He comes through with a second place in the final round of Salt Lake City. So good on Justin Cooper. I think that he's going to take a lot of momentum into the motocross season, and I hope that he comes through with some great performances. But, of course, I think a lot of people are going to be talking about Eli Tomac, Chase Sexton, and Jet Lawrence as the front three. But, but up until Tomac comes back, I think we're going to see Chase Sexton and Jet Lawrence come through with, with the same kind of battle that we kind of didn't really see last year well we'll see what happens and of course i also can't get through without uh, talking about uh without mentioning what happened with uh hunter lawrence and jason anderson and they were both 
receipt, and they both got written warnings. And I think Hunter Lawrence was fined an undisclosed amount of money, which I think is complete BS on my, in my view. I saw nothing wrong with both moves. And like I said in my video about that with with uh, with uh, Hunter Lawrence and Jason Anderson, and that stands what I said earlier. Jason Anderson ought to be grateful that Hunter Lawrence did not send him down. And if, and if Hunter Lawrence was not a lap down, you could bet your ass that Jason Anderson would find himself on his ass on the ground at Salt Lake City. Okay? So, you know what they say, you live by the sword, you die by the sword. And when someone gives you, and when you put somebody down, you can bet your booties that someone, that that retribution is going to come back to you. And you never know when that's going to happen. But it came a lot more sooner than I kind of expected. Not going to lie to you. So, anyway, guys, Supercross is over. We head outdoors to Palo Raceway in two weeks. And we'll see you all for that. So I will I will have some recaps of, of both motos in, in both classes. But for now, you guys, thanks for watching. And remember, subscribe if you think I'm worth listening to or if you just like my takes on this. So anyway, guys, thanks for watching. And remember, subscribe, and I'll see you all for Pala.